Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on the pilot scale batch distillation column. In this short video, we'll start by taking an overview of the 15 tray batch distillation column located in the School of Chemical and Bioprocess Engineering at University College Dublin. Then we'll look in more detail at the equipment itself, the utilities required to operate the column and the process monitoring and control systems available. This is information required both for operating the column and for simulating it using Aspen. There are associated videos on safe operation of the column, on the experimental method and on the use of the Aspen Plus batch simulation tool. Let's begin by looking briefly at the pilot scale batch distillation system, which is located within a bonded area in the pilot plant. At the base of the apparatus is the still pot, where the mixture to be separated is initially charged. This mixture is heated indirectly by steam, which flows through a glass coil located in a recirculation loop. Vapour rises from the still pot up into the column above. The column contains 15 bubble cap trays on which the liquid and vapour phases come into contact with one another. Each tray is equipped with a tap, allowing for collection of liquid samples. The trays can be accessed by the operator from the platform. At the top of the column, there is a condenser cooled with water. Reflux of condensate back into the column is achieved via a reflux divider. This has a swinging funnel which is operated by an electromagnet working on a timer. Depending on the position of the funnel, the condensate is either returned to the column as reflux or is diverted into the receiver as distillate or product. Using a scale on the distillate receiver, distillate collection rates can be measured. To operate the column at a finite reflux ratio, the required value, for example 4 to 1 or 8 to 1, is set using the reflux controller. The pressure of the steam supplied to the reboiler is set manually via valve on the inlet steam line. The cooling water flow rate to the condenser is also manually adjusted. The flow rate is measured using an inline rotameter. The temperature profile along the column is monitored during operation by means of thermocouples installed on the trays. There are also thermocouples on the condenser water inlet and outlet. To estimate steam flow rate to the column, the condensate can be collected. Let's now look at the equipment in a little more detail. The still pot is vertically oriented with hemispherical ends. It has a diameter of 25 centimetres and a maximum vertical height of 58.5 centimetres. For operation, it is initially charged with approximately 12 litres of the mixture for separation, in this case, a mixture of ethanol and water. The glass coils used to heat the mixture have a surface area of approximately 0.15 metres squared. In this laboratory, steam with a pressure of about 20 psi, or approximately 1.5 kilograms force per centimetre squared, is typically employed. The mass flow rate of the steam has been measured at between 10 and 13 kilograms per hour. Based on literature values for glass coils of this configuration, and for the operating conditions employed, a representative heat transfer coefficient of 250 kilocalories per metre squared per hour per degree C is assumed. The column, which has an internal diameter of 7.5 cm, is equipped with 15 trays, also of diameter 7.5 cm. The vertical spacing between trays is 7.5 cm. Each tray has three holes which together account for 5% of the tray area. The weir height is 1.6 cm. On this basis, the active surface area of the tray accounts for about 95% of the total. And this information is required for simulating the column using the Aspen Batch tool. At the top of the column, there is a water-cooled condenser with an internal diameter of 7.5 cm. Just below the condenser is the magnetic reflux divider. Based on the specified reflux ratio, it diverts the distillate from the condenser either to the distillate receiver or back to the column as reflux. To operate the column in total reflux, i.e. returning all condensate to the column, the magnet is inactive. The reflux controller is used to specify the reflux conditions, either total reflux or a finite value of reflux ratio. The cooling water flow rate can be manually adjusted using the cooling water valve. 
For safety reasons, the system is equipped with a cooling water alarm, which sounds if the water flow falls below a specified limit. Steam pressure to the reboiler, indicated on a Bourdon pressure gauge, can also be manually adjusted. The column is equipped with thermocouples connected to a data logging system so that the liquid temperature on individual trays as well as the temperatures of the overhead product, the residual liquid in the still and the cooling water inlet and outlet temperatures are recorded. At the top the column is open to atmosphere. Using a pressure gauge located at the top of the still pot, pressure variation in the system during an experimental run can be monitored. Steam condensate from the reboiler can be collected and its flow rate and temperature manually measured. Now, having reviewed the distillation apparatus, if you're planning to perform the experiment, you should watch the associated safety and experimental procedure videos. Thank you for your attention.